<laughs> what is he doing in that wall? That is unreal. <laughs> and I would never put anyone else's idea in my That wall. is unreal. Oh my God. Are you guys doing magic? Yeah, he is. What are you doing? So I'm on my way to Buffalo, New York. Uh, one of my favorite magic inventors lives there. His name's Garrett Thomas. So I'm gonna go talk to Garrett about magic, see Niagara Falls, have buffalo wings, because I don't know what else you do in Buffalo. My route has just taken me through the campus at uh, Geneseo. Genesio. And I'm just having this flashback because I did a show here, I don't remember how many years ago. I used to tour on the college circuit and I did a performance here in the middle of a season that was just, it was like a show every night and I was flying, it, the whole thing is like a haze to me. But I know those buildings, I know I've been there before. Very strange. Okay, let me, let me just set three experiences I've had in front of me. When I was 19, 20, my girlfriend and I went to see Bob Dylan play. And it was this transcendent, I wasn't a Bob Dylan fan at the beginning of the concert, but there was like this spiritual charm, like I don't know what it was, other than calling it magic. It was one of the most magical experiences I've ever, he just blew the roof off the building. So there's that. When I was seven or eight, my parents took me out to see a meteor shower. And it was the first time outside away from City Light I'd ever seen the Milky Way. It was just, it was again, one of the most transcendent experiences I've ever had, right? Then, just downstairs over there, I saw you do this <laughs> wallet thing. I've been doing magic for a long time. I have no idea what that, that was, cr that was crazy. In, in my mind, those three experiences are all pointed at something that they're, they can't quite reach. There, there are magical experiences that it might even be more valuable than some magic experience. Seeing Bob Dylan transcendent, you know, him setting up those conditions for you to emotionally feel music at that depth. You never, that, that is magical. But here's the difference. Every art form can be pushed to a level of magical. To claim to be a magician, you need to make that moment happen for everybody now. And that's the challenge. That's the challenge of the art of magic is that I don't care how bad your day's been, I'm going to make this be as transcendent as I possibly can for you and for everybody else around. I've heard that you don't know what magic you're going to do for someone oh, no. when you go up to them. That Never. you're you're assessing what is right in this moment for this person. Yeah. Tell me, tell me about that. Imagine uh, a a student talking to the master painter, and the student says, "Master, what type of paintbrush are you going to use?" Oh, well, I'm going to use this long handle uh, bristle brush uh, so I can get some movement in the paint. Movement in the paint. What kind of paint? Because we're using oil, right? Oh yeah, but I'm going to add some more. Uh, linseed oil into it to give it some some fluidity so that I can move it around a little bit and then the student says oh but what kind of canvas are you going to use and imagine if the master went it doesn't matter it doesn't matter you care about the paintbrush you care about the paint the brush the bristles the length of the brush and the paint you care about all those tools but yeah whatever whatever canvas <laughs> so let's think about it in the art of magic what are we sculpting what are we making we're shaping this moment and our canvas is your mind your point of view of this moment i have an audience of canvases and some of its newspaper and some of its watercolor and some of its uh, uh ceramic well what paint you're going to throw out there to get everybody to give everybody a good art piece you don't, there is no such thing i need to go okay bring your canvas to me and talk to them like a human being Figure out what they know, what they what, what they studied, what they how they already perceive their world. As soon as I know those little details, and you can assess them fairly quickly, you can then 
understand what type of paint to use and how to apply it. But if I don't care about the can, magic to me is advanced empathy. I mean, if you don't know people, if you don't care about people, if you don't love people, don't bother with magic. Even if you're good at it, get into it. Get in, be a surgeon. You know, do something else with your hands. Do you know what I love about that? So many experiences that are available to us right now, like in 2017, are, are available on our time and they're infinitely repeatable. You can watch Game of Thrones whenever you want and then you can watch it a thousand times if you want to. And, and that's the way it is with everything. YouTube video, like everything is on our schedule. Yep. And, and the way you talk about magic is all about designing something that is fundamentally disconnected from that and rooted in the present that, moment. That, more than ever now, being in the moment is so important. And so me performing magic the way I'm doing is encouraging people to understand to not record this moment and to be in the moment. The gift of magic to me is the gift of astonishment, the art of astonishment, the art of this moment that you know isn't real yet was so real so i bet garrett and i talked about magic for two hours and you know i'll cut it up pretty tightly for this episode but i may just cut together the full version of the conversation just so you can see what he has to say he has some thoughts about magic that i'd never considered before i had planned on driving on tonight um, because i just have a long way to go but i'm tempted to just hang out at niagara falls for a while i haven't been here for years and it's, it's definitely amazing. Anyway, I'll see you tomorrow.